Okay, today I'm talking about blood pressure. Blood pressure. What it is and how it's controlled in the short term, long term, and I might dive into drugs a little bit as well. Okay. Firstly, what is it? It's the pressure that the blood exerts on your arteries. Also your veins, but we measure it in we uh, we measure it in the arteries. So this is your artery here. This is not what an artery looks like. I cannot draw. I apologize. That's your artery there. It's the pressure that your blood is exerting on the walls of the arteries. Okay. Um, now you would have heard of diast you might have heard of diastolic and systolic pressure. Um, they're, they're your two types of uh, your two measurements of blood pressure. So we have systolic, and that is your blood pressure during systole. So that's when your ventricles of your heart are actually pumping blood out into your arteries. And the other measurement of blood pressure is diastolic, and that's when your heart is relaxed. So if you think about how they work, you'll realize that systolic blood pressure um, is governed largely by cardiac output and total peripheral resistance but diastolic is mostly just uh, governed by your total peripheral resistance that's not something I've read personally in the textbooks but I have heard clinicians say it and I think it's a good way to remember um, especially when you get into widen pulse pressures and people with high diastolics and low diastolics um, understanding that idea will help you with that concept um, but isn't particularly important here Okay, so like I said before, systolic is during systole when the heart's pumping. And diastolic is when the heart's relaxed. Yep. Okay. Done. Now so before I go into what actually governs systolic and blood pressure, I just want to talk quickly about why it's important. It's a vital sign. Um, they're very good in exam conditions, at least at my university. They're quick and they show they can show quite a good understanding. Um, so BP for blood pressure it is governed by cardiac output. Cardiac output and total peripheral resistance okay what's total peripheral TPR or peripheral resistance or however you want to call it uh, that's essentially it's governed largely by your muscular tone, um, or I'll just write venous tone. Uh, maybe arterial tone will be the better words. Venous plus arterial tone. Okay, and what is cardiac output? Excuse my writing there. Just going to scribble that out. Do, 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 do. Yep. Okay. So cardiac output, total peripheral resistance. Now, cardiac output is what your blood pumps out. Cardiac meaning heart, essentially output, putting out. Okay, so what determines how much you, your heart puts out, how much blood per second, oh. and that's your heart rate, so I'm just going to call HR, and your stroke volume, so if you think of every time the ventricles contract and push, that's a, that's a stroke, so your stroke volume, back in. Um, so heart rate times stroke volume. What determines your heart rate? Well, it is decreased by your parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system. So I'm just going to write PS. 
it is increased by a sympathetic nervous system and it is increased by catecholamines that's the first time I've ever said that word, I've written it down a few times catecholamines Cholamines. what are they? that's your adrenaline and noradrenaline or if you're uh, from the states are your um, epinephrine and nor norepinephrine okay what's stroke volume um, what, it, what affects stroke volume well we have something called uh, okay so VR venous return so venous return is how much blood goes back to your heart so wh however much blood goes into your heart is how much goes out um, is basically a simple idea in, in, physio in physiological ranges of course so your vessel venous return what, what governs that well that's your blood volume and venous tone so blood volume and venous return venous tone so how much blood is in your veins and how constricted your veins are if your veins are more constricted the blood is going to enter at the same volume will enter into the heart it will be at a higher pressure and it will enter into your heart quicker the other thing that um, governs venous return is I mean the other thing that governs stroke volume is simply cardiac control contractility Cardi cardiac contractility and that's essentially how hard cardiac heart contract squeeze so that's how hard your heart squeezes okay so that's what governs your cardiac output total peripheral resistance um, that's basically your blood pressure um, so if you can think if you have a very high blood pressure then um, oh sorry your peripheral resistance so that's basically um, the tone um, your total let me start again I'm sorry total peripheral resistance is essentially how much space you have to put the blood so if all your if you've had a lot of adrenaline um, in you at the moment at that point all your all the muscles in your arteries are going to be constricted so you essentially have less space for the blood so if you constrict the arteries your blood pressure is going to go up but and that increases your total peripheral resistance it also will increase your um, venous tone which will increase your venous return which will increase your stroke volume which will also incre increase your cardiac output so yeah it, it, they all, all of this kind of does actually affect each other but that's what blood pressure is actually governed by cardiac output and peripheral resistance okay so um, if you're a nurse or a doctor or a patient chances are you're gonna be exposed a lot to blood pressure um, numbers and that sort of thing and there it's just something you simply have to remember and honestly they're quite um, arbitrary um, you know, at 139 dias systolic for example your normal your high normal at 140 year hypertensive you know whatever <coughs> okay so what are the ranges for blood pressure um, you've heard of hype um, so I'm not going to talk about hypertension today um, or shock um, just hypertension and normal so normal so optimal is if you're standing up you're not falling over all your organs are perfused anywhere below 100 uh, for systolic and diastolic normal 
Yeah, I'll say optimal. Optimal. Anything less than 120 and less than 80 for diastolic. That's optimal. Normal. What's that? That is 120 to 129, 80 to 84. High normal. is 129 to 139 with a diastolic of 85 to 89 mm -hmm. and now we move into hypertensive which I'm going to change colors for okay hypertensive Hypertension begins with a systolic of 140 to 149 or a diastolic of 85 to 89 yep and that's stage one hypertension so if you're at this point depending on your other risk factors will depend on how crucial your early treatment is, whether or not your doctor or, or you in the future will actually prescribe your patient uh, drugs or just lifestyle modifications. Um, S2 is the next stage up, 150 to 159, or a diastolic of 100 to 109, actually, sorry, 90. I read my 90 to 99 is what that should be. And stage 3 is 160 plus or 110 plus for diastolic. Um, and then people, some texts will talk about critical, which is usually 180 plus or 120 plus. That's when you're at real dangers and, and probably when you'll get symptoms. So at stage three, you probably won't even get symptoms, just as a side note. Um, so that's critical. Okay, so they're the ranges. What does it all mean? Well, it's quite arbitrary, but they put us down in brackets and it, it just helps um, clinicians um, you know, follow the rules. And it's a good way to measure and just sort of quantify it all. Um, 180 plus is really bad, 120 is good, 140, you know, it's it's really time to modify high normal. Think about modifying, depending on your other risk factors as well. Okay. Um, okay, so how is blood pressure controlled acutely? Um, to talk about this, I'm going to talk about a situation when your blood pressure drops for whatever reason. So, pretending I'm in an exam, I'm going to press down, BP lower blood pressure. Uh, what, that could be from blood loss. I was using my mouse then. That could be from blood loss. And just standing up um, will drop your blood pressure. Uh, it can even be from uh, other causes of reduced uh, so like anaphylaxis, um, which is an allergic reaction. That's right, allergy. So whatever, um, whatever is going to decrease your blood pressure. Um, one, probably the most common physiological one is standing, and probably the most, the one we think about most is blood loss in terms of um, kind of exciting acute events. All right, so when you have a decreased blood pressure, there's these things, what does that mean? It leads to these things called the baroreceptors to become inactivated. I say inactivated because um, they're actually stretch receptors. I'm not sure what baro means, but I think of it as meaning stretch. 